Hi everyone. So today we'll be going over the um, pelvic girdle and the hind limb, uh, which is part of the pelvic girdle. Uh, so I've got a couple uh, of uh, specimens here that I want to show you. So here, this is the um, innominate bone, uh, pelvic girdle, pelvis. There's, it goes by a lot of different names um, because in mammals, it's actually made up of three separate bones that are all fused together. Um, and in this case, we have uh, both uh, pelvis connected, whereas in this one, we just have a single side. Okay. Now let's take this one and go over it a little bit. Uh, so the pelvic girdle is a little bit different from the um, pectoral girdle in that it is actually attached to the axial skeleton uh, via bony connections. So you can see that here. This is the sacrum that the uh, ilium is attaching to. I mentioned the ilium. That is this wing. Let me grab my pointer here. That is this wing right here. Um, that is one of the bones that makes up the uh, innominate bone. Um, it kind of ends just about here. Then we have, if it will focus, <laughs> focus please, uh, the pubis is right here. You can kind of imagine a bit of a suture forms through here and about there. Oops. And this is the ischium right here. And we do have some examples of uh, innominate bones with unfused uh, ilium, ischium, and pubis, but I don't have any on hand at the moment, so we're going to stick with this. Now, the ilium um, has a few terms you will need to know. So this part is called the wing of the ilium. Um, and we'll switch over to the half uh, nominate bone. Here is the articular scar. Um, that is what the sacrum um, attaches to uh, on the ilium. And then uh, the last one that is technically part of the ilium, uh, but also part of both the pubis and ischium to some extent, um, is the acetabulum right here. That is where the head of the femur articulates. Okay, and I think one last one that's a little bit um, hard to kind of imagine. Um, you see this slight bulge here on this uh, anominate bone? And if I pull this one up, um, it's actually a little bit more pronounced in this one. So that is the iliopubic eminence. Um, it's a muscle attachment site. Uh, it's sometimes called the iliopectineal eminence, but we're going to go with iliopubic because it is between the ilium and the pubis, and that is a term that is more often used in medical um, uh, circles, at least from what we have seen. So we're going to stick with that term. All right, uh, moving on, let's look at the pubis. There is really only uh, one term we'll need you to know that, well, besides the iliopubic eminence, and that is the pubic symphysis right here where the pubis joins uh, on either side. So in a lot of cases, you will not see the pubic symphysis uh, fused as you saw in here. You will see um, it broken across the, along the midline um, like you see in this one. Um, and we will expect you to um, be able to identify right and left. Um, and we'll go over that at the end of this video. Okay, so let's move on to the femur. We're moving down um, or distally uh, along the uh, uh, hind limb. So I have here a fox femur. Um, so we'll start on the proximal end. So you got the head of the femur right here. And this little divot, you should just be able to make out, is the fovea capitis. And then leading up to the head of the femur is the neck of the femur. Um, and you will be uh, required to submit terms like head of the femur or neck of the femur because there are several heads and necks as you might have seen in the forelimb video, there's a head and neck of the radius. Um, so we want to be very, as specific as we possibly can when we're naming these things. Okay, um, and then we've got the greater trochanter right here. We're looking at the um, anterior face of the femur. Um, and we'll go distally on the anterior face. So this is the patellar uh, surface right here, where the patella sits. Um, and on the lateral side, 
So that's going to be a little tough to show. Now, this is the lateral side. This is the lateral epicondyle. It is above the condyle. And then on the lateral side, then you have the lateral condyle is here. On the medial side, we have the medial condyle and the medial epicondyle. So the epicondyles are just the rough part above the condyle that is for muscle attachment. Um, and medial and lateral are pretty uh, useful in this, in uh, telling us exactly what, which one we're looking at. Okay, now on the posterior side, or the caudal side of the femur, um, this one might be a little difficult to see. So this is the linea aspera. <laughs> Um, and then we have the, uh, moving distally, we have the intercondyloid fossa. It's depression in between the condyles. Um, and again, you can see the uh, medial condyle. There's the head of the femur up there. And the lateral condyle. And then we have the medial epicondyle above the medial condyle and the lateral epicondyle above the lateral condyle. Oh, and I missed a couple things on the proximal end. Um, sorry about that. There's the, again, let's look at the, um, the head of the femur is over here now, and here's the greater trochanter of the femur. Um, here's the lesser trochanter of the femur. Um, and the, and between joining the greater trochanter with the lesser trochanter is the intertrochanteric line. Right there. Uh, here's, well, I can show you a cat femur. It is almost identical, it's just a little shorter. <laughs> Otherwise you can identify all those same features um, on this cat femur. Now let's move on to a, um, a tibia. So we'll start with the cat tibia um, this time around. So the tibia um, has well, as we keep going uh, distally, we have fewer terms to learn, which should be um, nice for all of us. Uh, so let's start on the proximal end of the tibia, that is the wider end. Um, it's kind of, kind of got like a triangular cross-section when you look at it um, uh, from the, on the proximal end. So uh, we'll start with the condyles. Um, so you've got the medial condyle and the lateral condyle. Um, up here, you have the tibial tuberosity, and this ridge or crest, this is the tibial crest. Um, and there's from a slightly different angle, from a medial view, but here's from the lateral view. So you have the tibial tuberosity and the tibial crest. Okay, moving distally. Um, this projection kind of sticks out like a kind of like you're taking your hand and doing this sort of like on the radius um, is the medial malleolus. Okay. Um, that should kind of tell you which direction is which when we're looking at the tibia, um, if you can identify something like the medial malleolus. Um, if we move on to the posterior side of the tibia um, up here, let's turn it like this. This is the popliteal notch right in here. Close right, there's the popliteal notch. Um, and again, we can see the uh, lateral condyle and medial condyle from a different view. And there's that medial malleolus right down here. Okay, and I wanna show you, well, let's actually go through the fibula first and then I'll show you this next thing. That's kind of interesting. This is the cat fibula. There's not a whole lot of terms on this. Um, this one, well, it's actually missing the head of the fibula. Um, it was, uh, it, there's an epiphyseal suture here where it broke off, um, but we'll see a head of a fibula on the next one. And then right down here, this is the lateral malleolus of the fibula. And those are the only two terms. In fact, you could just say lateral malleolus because there's only one lateral malleolus. Um, but that is right there. Okay, so we saw the cat tibia and fibula. Now let's take a look at the fox. Now, right off the bat, you probably noticed, oh, those two are connected. Um, <clears throat> so in a lot of uh, more cursorial or running uh, mammals and other lots of um, amniotes, uh, you will find that the fibula is often fused to the tibia um, or 
sometimes also reduced. Um, like you might see that in something like a horse or uh, cows even um, will have a reduced fibula. Um, that's fused to the tibia. Now, or actually, now I'm thinking about it, um, ostriches often will do that as well. <laughs> um, but uh, we can identify all the same parts that we found on the cat, tibia and fibula, um, on this fox. And you can see in uh, the tibia and fibula in articulation, which is maybe a little more helpful. Um, so there's the lateral malleolus of, of the fibula, and here's the medial malleolus of the tibia. And you can see where the um, head of the, oh, if we focus, there we go, if, where the head of the fibula um, articulates with the tibia. Um, and there's our tibial crest, tibial tuberosity, the, uh, I always have to orient myself, medial condyle, lateral condyle, uh, the popliteal notch. Yeah. And one last thing I want to show you from the fox. Um, this is, these are some ankle bones, um, some of the tarsals. So we've got the calcaneum or fibulare, fibulare, I've heard it pronounced several ways. Um, and then the uh, astragalus or talus is what it's usually called in mammals, um, but it's usually called the astragalus and lots of other things. So yeah, either one is fine. Um, that's those. Now let's go over telling right from left and we'll start with the innominate bone. All right, so one thing I look for when I'm looking at the innominate bone is the um, acetabulum. So the acetabulum faces laterally um, and the pubic symphysis faces medially. So you have an oriented, it's kind of like a basket or you have your hands going like this. Um, and you can see that a little more clearly with this one. So this one would be based on having the pubic symphysis facing medially and the acetabulum over here facing laterally would be a right um, uh, pelvis. Yeah, and this one is uh, both right and left because it's the whole thing. Neat. All right, uh, let's take a look at this femur now. If we think about this, um, the head of the femur has to articulate with the innominate bone in the acetabulum. So if the acetabulum is facing laterally, this has to face medially. So it's articulating, uh, sort of like this. Okay, so then if this is medial, um, this is lateral, and the patella is on the anterior surface, like this, or you can think of it this way, the condyles are on the posterior, the condyles are mostly exposed on the posterior surface, like that, then this would be a left femur. We can see a right femur right here, everything is just the opposite. And this one's from a cat again, so it's a little bit shorter. All right, so you have a tibia here. I have the tibia and fibula of the fox in the background. We'll get to that in a second. Um, but it's probably, it's gonna be more important for you to be able to identify a, uh, an isolated tibia or fibula on which side it is. So one thing I find very helpful to remember is the medial malleolus. So again, that's on the medial side. And then you can also take a look, um, the lateral side um, of the tibia by the uh, tibial crest is gonna be concave, whereas it's convex on the medial side. So that can help you identify which side you're looking at. So in that case, this one would be a right tibia. And the fibula is a little um, harder to side than most bones that we look at, um, but you can take the, uh, look at the lateral malleolus and whichever direction that is pointing will be the side that it is, if you have it, if you're, it's facing you. Um, so this is a right fibula. Um, we can actually see those in articulation on this left tibia and fibula here. Notice concave on this side, medial malleolus over here. Um, and then we got our lateral malleolus facing to the left. Hi everyone, Editor Aaron here. I totally forgot the issue in my original video, so let's do that. Okay, so let's take a look at that issue. Um, so here's the issue again, uh, and then right here you can see this projection. This is the ischial spine. Um, this whole part of the issue right here, we call that the body of the issue. And then right here you can actually see a little bit of the epiphyseal suture right there. That's kind of cool. Um, 
indicates this is a fairly young, uh, this one's a cat. Uh, this is the ischial tuberosity, right? And we can look at that um, from a lateral view as well. There's the ischial tuberosity once again, and the ischial spine right there. Okay. Um, and one last thing, this is the obturator foramen. That's one you should definitely know. I remember one of my friends was like, obturator. <laughs> uh, Elton John, anyone? No. All right. <laughs> Take care. <laughs>